Chairman, it's Angela from Democratic Services. We're now um, being live streamed. Thank you very much, Angela. Uh, and my computer tells me it's 10 o'clock. Are you happy for me to start? Yes, it's 10 o'clock now. Right. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this virtual meeting of the Central Area Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting <coughs> so that access can be restored. If the issue can't be resolved, I'll halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken verbally by roll call and the result announced by the Democratic Services Officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registerable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they'll be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting, members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should indicate by using the X in the chat box function. Before we start today's business, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'll now call your name. Please can you confirm your name and your electoral division member. Councillor Alvey. So, Councillor Martin Alvey, Councillor for Fioc and Plain Place. Councillor Batters. Good morning, Chris Batters, Councillor for Orland Levitt, Blislin Ward. Councillor Brown. Um, good morning, um, Malcolm Brown, Councillor for St Austell, Bethel. Councillor Bull. Good morning, Jackie Bull, member for St Austell, Poltaire. Councillor Dyer. <coughs> Good morning, John Dyer, Kenwyn, Chasewater and Baldy. Councillor Greenslade. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Fred Greenslade, St Dennis and Nanpin. Thank you, Councillor Jewell. <laughs> Sorry, Good that morning. wasn't with. Oh, Councillor yeah, Councillor Alan Joel Fowler Bosler. I am John Byer. Oh. Councillor Kenny. Yes. Good morning, uh, Joanna Kenny, Nuki Pentire. Councillor Martin. Good morning, Councillor John Martin for Helston South. Councillor May. Good morning, Councillor May, Penryn West. Councillor Simmons. Yes, good morning. Uh, Councillor John Simmons for Penryn East and Moiler. Councillor John Thomas. Good morning, everyone. Councillor John Thomas, Lanarin Scythians Electoral Division. Councillor Tudor. Oh, hello. Councillor Tudor, Three Marston and Glowes Division. And Councillor Williams. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Peter Williams, representing Mabe, St. Gluvius, and Perna Wardle. Thank you. I can also confirm that the following electoral division member is present. Councillor John Wood. Good morning, Councillor John Wood, Roach Division. Thank you. Thank you. I can also confirm that the following officers are present. Matt Stevenson, Development Management Group Leader. Gavin Smith, Development Management Group Leader. Ben Kerno, Senior Legal Officer. Stephen Kirby, Principal Planning Officer. Nigel Braben, Senior Planning Officer, Robin Watson, Highways Officer, Chris Rose, Affordable Housing Officer, 
myself, Emma Code, Democratic Services Officer, and Angela Saunders, Meeting Producer. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you very much, Angela. Before we go into today's meeting, uh, I think we're going to hear a few words from Councillor Simmons because we've had some sad news. A councillor that we all liked very much, Councillor Tony Martin, who was popular across party in the council, has sadly passed away. Tony chaired this committee for several years and I can't stress enough what a, a, a really popular councillor he was. Um, the vice chairman has suggested that we hold a few minutes silence and I think that's a very good idea, a few moment silence I should say, uh, which we will do after John has spoken. So John Simmons, would you like to say a few words about Tony Martin? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've known of Tony for quite a number of years when he was uh, bus driving and, of course, the landlord of his uh, the pub at Frogpool. But my only uh, real contact with Tony was after he took over from uh, uh, Penryn Easton Myler uh, from Robert Hitchens. And of course, I was uh, connected with the Paris Council and we worked together quite well and, and he was a real likeable fellow always had a nice uh, story to tell and as Mary has already mentioned he was a, a small guy with a, with a fantastically big heart and uh, he will be missed through, throughout so thank you. Yes it was very sad news indeed so we'll just pause for a moment to reflect all of those of us who knew Tommy and Tony and to remember him. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to uh, the apology. Are there any apologies, please, Emma? Thank you, Chairman. No, I have no apologies for today's meeting. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest. Then we go on to minutes of the previous meeting, the 7th of August, which you've all had to read. So uh, pre presuming that there are no changes for accuracy, would someone like to propose, please? Propose, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman. And a seconder? Second, Madam Chairman. Uh, that is? John Thomas. Thank you, John. Uh, right, so the minutes of the meeting of the 7th of September are proposed and seconded. Uh, we are now take the vote by roll call. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman. I'll call names alphabetically. Councillor Alvey? Four. Councillor Batters? Yes, in favour. Councillor Brown? Four. Councillor Bull? Four. Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer. I'll come back. Four. Oh, thank you. Councillor Greenslade. Four. Councillor Jewell. Four. Councillor Kenny. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Simmons. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tudor. After saying I wasn't here. Councillor Williams. Four. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that's been carried. Thank you very much. We move straight on then to the applications for consideration. And we start with agenda item 4.1, PA 18.09982, Tregothnan Estates, Lander Edgecombe Road, Roach. And it's outline permission with all matters reserved except for access for up to 150 dwellings, including children's play area, public open space, supporting infrastructure and associated works. The case officer is Stephen Kirby, and I believe you're going to present to us, please, Stephen. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Chairman and Committee. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Can we all see that? Yes. Is that is that visible on your screen? Yes, thanks, Stephen. Great. Okay. Um, 
so this agenda, as, as Chair has just advised, is for outline permission with all matters reserved for up to 150 dwellings. Those are the key issues. I shall sum up on those as we get towards the end of the presentation as well. The site is situated to the west of the village of Roach, 8.86 hectares of land. It's Grade 4 agricultural land. It is adjacent and abuts front onto Edgecombe Road. So that is where the white arrow is that I'm using on my screen and Harmony Road to the south. This is a little bit more of a zoomed in. Stephen, can I, can I stop you just a minute? I've just had a note from Councillor Kenny that some yes. may be experiencing. Um, yes, somebody has cleared the screen share. It's all right now. It's all right. OK, no, thank okay. you very much. Sure. Sorry, Stephen, please go no, on. That's absolutely fine. No problem. So, uh, yes, yeah, so here's the site in the context of the village itself. As I say, Edgecombe Road, which is there to the east, if you can see my white arrow on the screen, that's where it fronts and to Harmony Road to the south. You'll also see that there's Harmony Close to the south, which is a cul-de-sac and that connects in and Park Quoon Close and the estate there, which is directly to the east. As I say in the initial point, uh, agricultural uh, grade is four, grade four, um, there's a little bit three to the south, but essentially it is not in the most best, uh, best productive in that sense. Um, it is identified as Site D in the Roach Neighbourhood Development Plan, the adopted neighbourhood plan. So it is a site that's allocated for housing. This is the submitted framework plan. Um, this gives you an indication of through route between Edgecombe Road down through the site and then out onto Harmony Road or vice versa. Um, what the plan also indicates that there are a number of areas within this of the 150 dwellings, which is relatively low density uh, for open spaces and ecology as part of the bigger picture of this plan itself. Uh, this is the approved A30 link road. Um, it was approved in April 2019. Um, this is the junction that would be the nearest junction to the development site itself. So the land that I'm now pointing out with my arrow here abuts the slip road and the new works for the A30 and the new roundabout junction here and then off goes in that direction. Um, as I say, technically uh, junctions have been assessed by highways and assessed to be acceptable and these are also being have been checked and cleared in terms of HGV um, turning as well um, and manoeuvring should that be required. This is the site wide drainage. Uh, again, this has been updated. There is a flood risk assessment that's been submitted and updated. So this gives uh, a clear indication and technically signed off that the, the scheme can be suitably drained. In terms of landscape, uh, it's not within any statutory landscape designation or near to. Uh, it's not within any heritage um, designation. Um, the site itself, this is Harmony Road. So this would be the frontage itself onto Harmony Road. Uh, this is the Harmony Close I was referencing at the bottom image, so that would be a connection through into this new development. This is Park Quoon Close on the top, so it's the furthest boundary there. You can see in the middle distance, which would be the site boundary on the eastern side of the site. And then this image on the bottom is Edgecombe Road heading out towards Victoria and towards the Industrial Estate and so on. So essentially it would be a frontage just off uh, past that um, van with the chevron there. Uh, and then these are just some wider images of the context in which this site relative to the landscape uh, and to Roach itself. It is not considered to be a site that's going to have a high impact in terms of landscape. And as I say, it's not within or adjacent to any particular designations. Uh, in terms of the balance and considerations, uh, we've got the principle of housing developments in accordance with the adopted neighbourhood plan provision of affordable housing and open space on site. There would be 38 affordable homes of the 150, 25% as required by the specific policy designation. It's in zone five. Education contribution, health contribution, uh, the new package uh, of roads for connecting through to Harmony Road and Edgecombe Road and package of off-site highway works, including traffic calming, 
ecological enhancement and flood risk assessment and management as well. Um, Chair, if I could please just reference the adopt the um, update, please. Um, I don't know if you'd like me to share my screen with the update, if that's helpful. Sorry, you're on mute, Chair, I can't. Yes, apologies. Yes, that would be helpful. Well, I'll do that, OK. So just bear with me a second, please. I do this and then go to... Do apologise. Had it a few seconds ago, and of course, it's now escaped me. Um, uh, don't don't worry. Let me just ask. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Can you see that, Chair? No. No. Okay. My apologies. And what about other members? Can anyone see anything other than a list of? I'm no. just. Uh, I'm just trying again. Can we, can I, does that work? Can you see that now, Chair? Yes, yes, we can. Great. OK, that's great. OK, so that um, I just expand the screen. So effectively, this is item 4.1 as referenced earlier. Um, members will already have this, of course, but essentially just to run through this quite briefly, we have had a formal response from NHS Kerno uh, that does identify a health impact and it does identify a specific sum of money um, it's averaged at 2.5 residents, uh, so it is it's based on averages about um, approximate um, density of occupation by individuals. So on the calculation they use, then we're looking at um, a £50,000 contribution. Um, so that would be a sum of money that would contribute towards uh, a proportion uh, of required funding in the context of the capacity um, of the local medical facilities and obviously trying to absorb for patient growth and plan for future patient growth. In terms of the affordable housing, this is simply to identify that there has been an increase in the requirements from 75 originally set out in the report in March to 83 in terms of the affordable housing needs for the parish. Um, another important point just for members is that in context of Para 107 in the officer report, um, in the context of the planning agreements, uh, heads of terms that are set out in the report, uh, officers consider that a viability uh, appraisal is possible and should be incorporated into this. They are proposing 25% affordable housing as part of the project, but to enable the developer to submit a viability at reserve matter stage without a requirement for a deed of modification, um, should the members uh, support this project and we get a secured and signed off section 106. And the reason why is because this clause is due to the many unknowns currently concerning the viability of the scheme, including whether or not a road suitable for HGVs will need to be constructed through the application side and as its inclusion is therefore considered to be logical and pragmatic. With regard to education, there is an education contribution that the scheme would provide. Uh, in the usual way, it's 2736 per qualifying dwelling. Uh, the, in, the infrastructure needs assessment identifies that um, that would be considered towards uh, expansion of existing schools, and that would be the first preference. Evidently, it's not possible to say at this outline stage exactly how much money that would accrue from that particular scheme because the density, obviously, in the detail are not known at this stage. Sorry, not the density, the detail. Uh, mention the health contribution already. In terms of open space, generally, broadly, the scheme will absorb everything it's expected to absorb because of the low density and because of the amount of land that's being put forward. Uh, that means that um, all the typologies can be signed off and covered off in the scheme. Uh, well, there is a, an issue about whether youth provision might be on or off site, but again, we could build some flexibility into the planning agreement on that basis. And with regard to highways, there would be a package of off-site highway measures that are offered up uh, and planning conditions to control um, in the context of the limitations of 50 homes, which is identified in the um, policy B2 of the NDP. And we finally, with regard to the proportion of SIL, one correction with regard to Zone 5 with Roaches In is that it doesn't attract a SIL contribution directly 
but what it does do, I'm not going to read all of this out or go through it in great detail, but essentially it becomes a SIL neighbourhood payment, uh, which goes to as a proportion and it gets um, allocated. But I believe it's something that the relevant village um, parishes would have to bid for. So as I say, that is something that's set out in the SIL regs uh, for Cornwall Council. So the recommendation chair is as set out on the update, uh, incorporating, of course, the health contribution as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, um, Stephen. Uh, we do not have any speakers uh, in objection this morning, and we don't have a parish or town council representative, but we do have Mr. Graham Cridlin, who's the agent for the application. Is Mr. Cridlin with us, please? I am, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mr. Cridlin. Um, thank you. You have three minutes to state your case. Uh, thank you very much. Thank You'll you very be told much. When 30 seconds remain. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Councillors and Officers. Uh, my name is Graham Cridland uh, for Origin 3. We're the planning consultants for the Tregothman estate. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, as you know, application was deferred from the 16th of March 2020, and a lot's happened since that date. The fact that you all attending this committee virtually and I'm speaking to you remotely is a testament to that. However, significant progress has been made since that date. The Tregothan Estate welcomes the recommendation to approve the application before you today. The estate's worked hard um, and very closely with the officers of the council and has liaised closely with the parish council in bringing this application forward for consideration today. The estate is also very appreciative of the efforts of Gavin Smith and his team in working closely with us and liaising with the parish council with a view to agreeing the form and wording of a number of the conditions that you can find within the report, as well as the heads of terms for the Section 106 agreement, um, which is to be uh, entered into shortly. The scheme is in full accordance with the neighbourhood plan and as well as delivering 150 new dwellings to Roach, uh, a proportion of which will be affordable, it will also provide for a children's play area, public open space, including allotments, education contribution, improvements to existing highway networks and a contribution towards improvements at the existing uh, medical centre in Roach. Uh, Madam Chair, the health obligation only became known to the estate late last week, um, but I'm pleased to report that the contribution of just over £50,000 was agreed and accepted by the estate without hesitation. Uh, I was going to set out for you the details uh, and heads of terms for the Section 106 agreement, but the officer's already done that for me, so I won't labour that particular point. Um, needless to say that work is still required to agree and settle the Section 106 agreement. Uh, that's a job that uh, I'll be working on myself and I will aim to complete the agreement by the indicative deadline of the 30th of October 2020. And in that regard, I've already been speaking with the Council's appointed lawyer. So finally, and as mentioned previously, the Tregothman Estate welcomes the positive recommendation from the Council and would welcome a resolution to grant permission today. Many thank you. Many thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Cribland, please? I'm seeing nothing indicated in the chat box. Could you confirm that, please, Vice Chairman? Yeah, I'm just typing in an X myself, Chairman. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, then, uh, Councillor Greenstade. Yeah, good morning to you, sir. Uh, on page 20 of our report, uh, the divisional member who is present with us today has made one or two comments and I would like your thoughts, please, as to how you feel about it as the agent. Uh, fairly quickly, it says the clay practice is oversubscribed and can hardly cope with the number of new residents now living in the community. The school is full and Cornwall Council has to pay transport for children out of the village of Roach. Uh, I wonder just what your thoughts were on that. Uh, those two comments, please. You could, uh, excuse me, could you refer me to the paragraph again, sorry? Page 20, oh, page 20. Uh, number sorry, 29, paragraph 20. top of the page. What, what paragraph number is it? 29, 29. Okay, I'm still trying to find it. 
just to say, Chairman, I will be asking Councillor Wood the same questions. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I mean, and, and as regards to the school, um, I mean, the contribution is being um, paid, uh, as with uh, all um, developments uh, in, in Cornwall, uh, an, an amount of, I think it's 2,700 and something pounds um, per qualifying dwelling is being contributed, um, which has been calculated by the education officer for Cornwall Council. Yes. And the medical practice? Oh, sorry. Uh, the, um, again, another contribution has been requested. And as I mentioned uh, when I spoke earlier, um, that, that, that amount has been agreed without hesitation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Brown, you have a question? <coughs> come on, come on. Yeah, I, we can't hear you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown, I think you're on mute. Yeah, it. Oh dear, do we have some technical difficulties? Meeting producer, would you like to come in? Um, I don't really know what to suggest. Uh, Councillor Brown, you, you, you've just muted yourself. Uh, 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 Angela, it's Emma Code, um, Democratic Officer. Does Councillor Brown want to type his question in the chat box and then we can ask the question of yeah, the speaker? Yeah, otherwise I was going to suggest he calls help desk. Yeah, we can't hear you, Councillor Brown. Yeah, I think Councillor Brown is probably typing in the chat box, hopefully. Strangely, I can. I think I can hear the typing. Councillor Brown, try speaking. So, Chairman, it's Emma Code. There is a question in there now from yes. Councillor Brown. When, if permission is given, Mr. Cridland, would development be likely to start, please? Uh, good question. Um, this is an outline consent, uh, so obviously reserved matters needs to be approved beforehand um, and, and that really will be at the hands of um, whoever comes forward to develop the site. Thank you. Uh, are you satisfied with that answer, Councillor Brown? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williams, is that uh, an X in your chat box? Did yes, you... Madam Chairman, that is an X. Right. Uh, I would like to ask, um, obviously you've got to be putting a children's play area in, um, and obviously you'll be um, build, probably building the uh, affordables uh, first. Um, at what stage of the development will the children's play area be completed, and will it be completed uh, at the time where you hand over the affordable homes? Please, thank you. Uh, again, a good question. Um, those details haven't actually been agreed yet, um, and it, it'll, they won't be agreed until a developer is on board. Um, but I mean, ordinarily, there would be triggers incorporated into the Section 106 agreement, um, and that will be agreed with your officers um, to bring them forward in line with uh, dwelling house numbers. Um, I, I can't give you precise details at the moment because um, obviously we don't have a developer on board. All right, Councillor Williams. Can I, I just have a supplementary, Madam Chairman? Yes, of course. Um, and the reason I asked the question, um, because uh, I've, it's happened in two of my divisions where as uh, the site is built out and then there's a struggle to get the children's areas completed. And that was the reason I would like to see if, if we're, I know it can come later, but if we was minded to approve it, I would like to see a condition that the uh, that the children's play area, play area was uh, installed before, um, uh, well, before you sell the affordable homes. 
Right, maybe um, we can raise that with the planning officer in a moment, Councillor Williams, when we come to questions of the planning officer. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Right, um, Vice Chair, I see no other indication. Do you? I agree with your comment, Chairman. Right, then thank you very much for joining us, Mr Cridland. Um, just before we move on to hearing from the divisional member, I want to make sure that Councillor Brown can hear uh, everything that's going on. Um, Councillor Brown, can you uh, just type in the chat box um, a confirmation that you can hear, because it's important we all hear from the divisional member. Chairman, it's the meeting producer. Oh yes, I can see Councillor Brown is back. I couldn't see him. Um, Councillor Brown, can you just confirm you can hear us if, if you can't speak by typing it in the chat box? Uh, yes, um, uh, what I've done, what I've done, I just switched off the computer and switched on again. So I thought that was the most expedient way of um, getting contact back again. Thank you. You're with us loud and clear now. So thank you. Right, we move on to hearing from the divisional member, Councillor Wood. Um, Councillor Wood, you'll be asked to sum up after five minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. I just first would like to draw members' attention to the planning application number 18. That was when it was put forward. The road had not even had planning permission then. It didn't get planning permission to 2019. What I'm talking about is the road, the link road that goes from Victoria to St Austell. I want to draw your attention very strongly to that and I'll state why later. I applaud the Parish Council for upholding its neighbourhood plan strongly and putting every delay mechanism in place. Yes, they have liaised with Tregothland Estates and their agents, but the Parish Council has stood its ground and said, read our neighbourhood plan. They have had my full support and I have said that no, they're not a bunch of barristers who wrote up our neighbourhood plan. We didn't employ the top planning officer in the county or in the country. We had our neighbourhood plan approved by Cornwall Council. And if it's not worth the paper it's written on, then every other neighbourhood plan should be abandoned at this stage because then why did the developers, who gave them the green light to come forward with a planning application in 2018 before this road was even on the planning and now they say they're pushing hard to get this road yes the government has given it the green light but no it hasn't been paid for you and i all know very well from past experience governments have said yes and then at the last minute withdrawn the funding we saw that with the a30 a long for a long time past bobman and then past Roche victoria and we've and we were encouraged as a council, Cornwall Council spent vast amounts of money. So we kept saying as a parish council, who encouraged this planning application to come forward? Nobody has ever answered that question and I don't expect to get an answer today, but I felt I had to mention it. The road has its planning permission, this is relevant, but the compulsory purchases have only now been served, not completed. The stopping orders have been served, but not completed. The government finance, agreed but not yet handed over the money to Cornwall Council. So we then move on to this planning application and we say well okay if they're putting it in now that would be understandable because the houses would be completed as the road would be coming to into use and fruition. The traffic in Roach Village is unbearable and that, that is just a fact of life. Why would you want to put this volume of traffic through a brand new housing estate by saying we're going to provide a road? That would be planners madness, wouldn't it? To say all that traffic should go through this housing estate, all the HGVs, etc. So why would you want to do that? Surely you would want to wait until you knew the road was under construction. So that's a big question that hasn't been answered and we are confused by. The parish council now reluctantly support, but still say, hang on, just a little bit longer. It's only six weeks, we're told, six or eight weeks away and the road could get signed off. The parish council will then be 100% behind it, but with some reservations. When we look at the contribution, they say, oh, we're going to make 50,000. I was told 60,000 a few days ago, it's been reduced to 50,000 towards the health centre. Is that going to provide what, a room, 
At 1,500 to 2,000 a square metre, I'm not sure what a doctor's surgery costs the, to enlarge these days, but it's not going to provide a huge contribution. And education, at those houses which will qualify to make a contribution. So ones, one bedroom homes, they won't make it. The affordable houses, they won't make a contribution. And we're told, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you those figures later on. So at the moment, the parish council will support this, but somehow the committee they're asking, continue with this delay. The parish council have fought hard and long to say this is a, being a premature application. In principle, it is acceptable because it's in our neighbourhood plan. But we didn't employ a top barrister to rip our neighbourhood plan apart. But the Trugothman Estates chose to look at the minutiae of the wording and chose to come forward and say, we can justify this, can't we? Look at the wording on page 19 of your neighbourhood plan. It states clearly, but no more than no more than 50 new homes should be occupied until the road is in place. No more than. That's clever, isn't it? You know, maybe we should have looked at those wording far more carefully when we were agreeing to it, because when the road was being tentatively talked about, the Trugothan Estates were going to make a contribution on the back of getting planning permission for 150 houses. That no longer applies. They don't need, the road doesn't need that contribution. So I say the Parish Council will support this application if and when the true. road gets its full permission. So that, that's the stance of the Parish Council. I'm happy to answer questions, Chairman. Thank you. Jackie Bull, you're muted. You're muted, Chairman. I am sorry. I don't normally use the mute through the meetings, but uh, there's quite a lot of background noise here. I didn't want it to disturb you. Um, right, uh, Vice Chairman, would you like to start, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, Councillor Wood. Uh, I gather from your comments at the moment, you feel that the um, application is a preemptive strike, if you like, and you would prefer, I think you mentioned six to eight weeks waiting time to see if the government come up with the money for the road, because I, I share your concerns about the um, traffic through roads. I think it's apparent to everyone there is a problem there. But do you think a, another deferment would be applicable or are you content to go ahead as things are at the moment? I think the planning officer might be able to answer that one better than I could if he can assure us that it's going to take a few weeks for actually all these legal bits and pieces, although the planning committee might say, well, yes, we're minded to approve. I don't know how the planning committee will view this, but um, the parish council have almost said, well, we, we're almost punch drunk with it. They've come back to us numerous times and they've twisted and turned. Um, it's gone up and down. I'm not sure whether this is housing led. We've had a lot of new housing in Roach uh, under a lot of pressure. And yes, we understand the legal ramifications of this. We just want that 100% guarantee that that road, that link road is going to be built. Once the planning permission is in place, top planning barristers will go to the government the inspector and say, look, they've given us planning permission for 150 houses and now they won't let us build them. And I think with the present government situation, they would say, well, go ahead and build them then. We all know how inspectors' minds work and they don't um, actually take in the minutiae of the community and the community has had more angst over this than when we had threat when we were threatened with the incinerator. It's just much angst of this because the community said, what did we spend all that money and time and energy drawing up a neighborhood plan for from somebody to be able to bulldoze their way through it? So you can understand the parish council stance. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You, Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Tudor, you're next. Would you like to unmute Councillor Tudor? Hello. Yeah, thank you. There's a slight delay. I am unmuting and things, but it takes a while. Um, um, yes, Councillor Wood, uh, it's, it is, does seem a shame, doesn't it, that the neighbourhood plan is sort of, that the nuance and is open to interpretation. So just so I'm clear in my mind, the point you're making, um, you, you've said that the Parish Council were not opposed to the development per se, and you referenced the restriction to no more than 50 homes being occupied before the link roads completed. But but that doesn't mean that 50 homes can be built, does it? As you say, we're, we're back to 
the legal ramifications. Um, and it is education is a mega problem. I've attended three years in a row education tribunals pleading for children to get into our local school. Unfortunately, we have built houses nearer to the school than the outlying farms. And I've had farmers who've come to me in tears, literally in tears, saying my great great grandchildren can't get into the school that I went to, my children went to and my grandchildren went to. And now I can't get my to into them because we live too far away. The proximity rule set down by the government. And every time I've gone to the school's appeals, they've said to me, well, right to the government. We can't do anything. We're, our hands are tied by the proximity rule. And this has been very distressing. And as a divisional member, try knocking on the doors of local farmers and saying, you know, I, I represent the council. And they say, what council? They haven't got any teeth, have they? They can't stop the school. And so we have, I think it's now 15 children from the village being taxied out. One school was chosen in preference. We filled that one up. We've had to go to another school now. So when we hear the education contribution is a bit of a tentative figure of, oh, well, we'll see how many houses have got to. And that's been left for agreement. I think Trugothans should come forward and think about their farming tenants, who some of them go back many, many generations, who are sorely distressed by the fact they can't get their children into the local school. And I think Trugothans do have a responsibility for that. Thank you. Thank you. you. Councillor May, you're next. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, John. Um, I think Councillor Greenslade's partly asked my question, but I suppose, John, if the road goes ahead and the parish councillor is saying they will support if the road is going ahead, does that apply to you as well? Yes, I will support it 100% if the road goes ahead. We know that the contractors who have been appointed are very community minded and we're hoping then that we can do sensible negotiations with Cornwall Council and the Education Department that instead of Griffiths making their um, neighbourhood that they want to work within the neighbourhood, that maybe they'll be able to help with towards the education provision, providing an extra classroom, et cetera, and keeping the costs way down by coming into some sort of partnership agreement. We want to have those sort of tentative talks with them and find innovative ways of making improvements within our community. I've already been talk talking to other developers in the area who want to build out to Victoria and making the same sort of noises. And they seem to be quite open eared to that, if I could say. Um, so th there is a way forward and I think that th the village could get, get something back and therefore the children and the school could benefit in, in a way that uh, could be innovative rather than just money disappearing into the county pot. But that those are for future negotiations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor May. Um, I have no other indications for questions. Could you confirm that, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, I can, Chairman. Thank you. Then we move straight into questions of the planning officer. And I wonder, Stephen, if you could address the issues that Councillor Wood raised first, please. Uh, ah, yes. Wait a minute. I've now got um, Councillor Kenny and Councillor Alvey have both come up with X's. Okay. Uh, Councillor Kenny, are you wanting to ask a question of Councillor Wood? No, that was for the planning, planning officer. officer. Right. OK. So, Councillor Kenny, you're first. Uh, yes, the other I'm reading the neighbourhood plan and looking at the report, the other road, the heavy goods road, what, what's the progress on that? Um, Councillor Kenny, that, that, that's a potential for um, going through the site itself to avoid the village centre. Um, what, I, what I was going to do is just to focus, if I may, Councillor Kenny, and probably to help other members as well with regard to the report. Um, if you could look at um, paragraph five on page 14 of the report um, and the reason I just want to draw that to the members attention is because it it focuses on policy B2 of the neighbourhood development plan and if I could just quickly read it through for you it requires that a restriction on occupying no more than 50 dwellings within the current proposed housing scheme be imposed until the new road has can be is being completed to provide a heavy goods vehicle diversion to deter HGVs from Roach Village Centre. This policy sets out two options for the bypass road. It's an either or scenario. 
being either the A30 St. Link, uh, St. Austell link, so that's the, the new road, the big road, or an alternative road running through the application site between Harmony Road and Edgecombe Road. The proposal as submitted, as we'll have it now in front of you, would satisfy that requirement with the recommended condition requiring the applicant to wait until either of the new roads are completed before progressing past 50 homes on the site. So to answer the point that Councillor Peter asked about, can they actually make a physical start? Yes, they can. But the limits, the ceiling on progressing is up to 50 homes constructed and occupied. So in terms of the timetable to help members, the other point that was mentioned earlier and asked of the applicant's agent was about the timing of this. Uh, yes, we are not quite yet, we do not yet quite have the, the green light from government. I've spoken to the project lead this morning on the A30. I'm working with them as well on pre-commencement planning conditions and the like. Um, and they know that there's a considerable momentum in London to get this signed off and the green light given for the A30 link. So they are proceeding with considerable confidence to work up the pre-commencement conditions um, to do with the compulsory purchase orders and the like uh, to obviously move on and to work with community groups as Councillor Wood has advised with regard to Roach and that's up and down the A30 link corridor itself. So in that context there's a high degree of confidence in them that the scheme will go ahead the A30 link. The backstop is the alternative scenario which is set out in policy in paragraph five there and it's expanded on in the planning conditions in the report. Uh, there's also a requirement for the traffic rev reg reg regulation order to prevent HGBs using some of the approach roads to the village centre which the applicant has agreed to design and make a fin financial contribution to Cornwall Council to recover the cost of the TRO consultation and any necessary signs. So the recommended section 106 planning obligation would require this TRO to be established prior to the occupation of 51 homes in the application site in full accordance with the requirements of the NDP. Planning permission has already been granted for the A30 link and the permission includes conditions requiring an identical HGB, HGB diversion to uh, required by the NDP. The appropriate wording obviously can be incorporated into the planning agreement should members uh, give this a positive recommendation. With regard to the contributions that have been mentioned, I would just say that again, it is a matter of the evidence base that's being promote, promote, um, provided by the relevant consultees. And uh, as I have advised to the, the ward member and uh, to some of the members, it is a matter of we will assess and provide professional advice to you as the members on the basis of that consultee advice and that is the position that they've come to. So we have for the health we have 50,000 just over, for the education we have the 2736 per qualifying dwelling uh, and obviously the affordable housing the proportion has set out. So I hope that helps just to provide some members and clearly that was started off by Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Chair. Can I, can I just come back? If the A30 goes ahead, as we all hope it does, does the build of the alternative HGV route, that doesn't, doesn't happen? Exactly, exactly. I mean, the point the point of the exercise is to have a fallback position and, and that's reasonable and expected and, and everybody recognises that. Um, as, as Mr Cridlin was saying, we don't yet know the timing of this new housing scheme. Uh, there is a, if, if the members are minded to approve this today, then there is a process to go through the planning obligation to be uh, completed and signed off. Uh, then there's a reserve matter scheme. Uh, they obviously would have to go out to uh, the market in terms of uh, house builders to build the project, take it on. So that's all going to take time. So in terms of the process of working on the A30, uh, Steve Gudge, uh, project lead from Cornwall Council, working on that with Griffiths, who are the main contractors, they already are up and running with preparatory works um, um, on different parts of the route. So they are building up a considerable momentum in terms of getting on with that process. So when you start then to look at the timings of how these schemes could work together, 
um, I don't think there'd be much in it in terms of actually getting down towards the sun. There we are. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got three other councillors wishing to ask questions. Councillor Alvey, you're next, please. Thanks, Chair. And, and my question uh, relates to education. Um, and again, representing a rural division myself um, and the challenges around um, applications for, for estates where the school is already full. Um, unfortunately, rural schools tend to be single form entry and, and to actually move from a single form entry school to a two form entry school is, is a massive undertaking. Now, I'm, I'm doing the simple maths on this. Um, we're talking about about £310,000 um, education con um, contribution from this development, um, which is by no means enough to take a school from a single form entry to a two form entry. It may put in a couple of extra classrooms if there is a, a pinch point within the age um, banding. However, you can actually pull 106 money from other developments. Um, so my, um, my question is, is there any 106 education money already in the bank, so as to speak, either from recently approved or recently built out developments in the Roche um, area that sit within the catchment of the school? And has the school physically got the space with which to expand, even if this money was to come forward? Um, very good questions. Um, the honest answer on both of them is I do not know. Um, they, they, all I can advise members is that the consultee advice from the education needs impact assessment is that there is an identified requirement, um, and they would look to do what they need to do within the school environment um, first. Uh, and take that money and that contribution. And if, as you say, Councillor Alvey, if there's a requirement, I have heard of this in the past, where they can pull some funding uh, from other sources to help to deliver a particular expansion project at the school, then I would assume that that's what they would do. I can't make any promises or guarantees, of course, but all I can say is that right now, that is the level of contribution that they would need and that would uh, basically come from the scheme. Thank you. Councillor Tudor. Sorry, you caught me out there. I thought um, Councillor Kenny was before me. Um, I just wanted to, to just ask a question on the on the on the backstop position here that you, that you talked about, um, because I'm trying to establish what's the rush. What's the rush of, 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 of this? Why this planning application is is um, why it's appropriate that it goes in now and doesn't wait. So, when you were when you were going over the update, I mean, if you could just like make it uh, clearer for me. So, does it mean that um, if um, if the road if the A30 road works haven't started or don't look like they're going to by the time the developer starts building, does this mean that the developer can start to question the viability because of the road works the alternative road works? that would um, have to happen. That, what, what, what the idea of that is, Councillor um, Tudor, is that, th that you are right in that there is a backstop. The backstop is the idea of the road through the site itself. That, if it was designed to HGV standards, that's a, a slightly higher grade road, essentially. It's, it's a bigger road. Um, and, and yes, there's a cost to that. So it's, it's building in the, the um, into the planning agreement, a clause that enables that scenario to be played out and we would test the viability of the scheme overall to see what that means in terms of provision of contributions or the affordable housing or whatever but uh, it is it is putting that uh, into the agreement to give all the opportunity to consider that at that point it's not the ideal scenario the ideal scenario is that the a30 link is built of course but it is the backstop and it is a backstop that set out originally from the NDP. Um, so we're just playing that through through up to the planning agreement itself. OK, so just so, sorry, just so I'm really clear on the technical bit. So in theory, technically, you, you could end up in a situation where you have less affordable housing um, than we do on the application at the moment because an alternative road 
um, because of the, the, the grade then is the alternative road that might have to be built. Yeah, theoretically, that's right. Yeah. Again, it makes me wonder why the rush. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I hope I'm having better luck in being heard this time. Um, I really wanted to ask Mr Kirby to give advice on two theoretical outcomes of today's meeting. One is if we were to defer the application, given the uncertainty about the timing of the new road, but the likelihood that there will be clarity very soon. Therefore, if it came back to the committee not that far ahead, we'd be in a better position. The other, the other option, which hasn't been mentioned yet, is that we are not obliged to follow the neighbourhood development plan. It's, it's a material consideration. But for example, if we thought the figure of 50 houses was too generous to the applicant, given the uncertainty, could we impose, could we grant planning permission, but with a lower number, um, which would be allowed before the road was built? Um, I think advice on those two points would be helpful. Um, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, I think firstly, with regard to deferment, in the context of work that um, we've done, which everybody has acknowledged has happened in the sense of working with um, the, the applicants, ourselves, the board member, the parish council, um, we've arrived at a position where, from the professional officer's uh, point of view, there, there is nothing now that technically says that this scheme does not comply with the neighbourhood plan. And, and that that is the source of the discussion throughout. Uh, appreciating the longevity of the application and people's attitude towards how we've got to this position with there being such a slow burn to get to this point and we're still not quite there with the A30 link project sign off. But nevertheless, as it stands, as a material, set of material planning considerations before you, we have a scheme that accords with the plan. So from the officer's perspective, there's nothing to say that we should not be supporting or recommending a support position. But uh, clearly that, that's a matter for you. With regard to the imposing a lower threshold, again, this comes back to the neighbourhood plan. We take our point of reference from it and that's the 50 home threshold that's set out. Um, I agree that there could be other scenarios um, where you might be looking at a lower threshold. It's a little bit unusual, to be honest. I mean, it's not it's either a full pre commencement usually or it's you just allow development to happen and you sometimes and you can phase development accordingly. This would be a phase development and that's set out in the planning conditions. But nevertheless, the 50 home threshold is taken from the NDP uh, and if we are seeking to be compliant with it, then that's our source reference, if you like. I hope that helps. Would you want to come back on that, Councillor Brown? At all? No, no. Um, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Kirby's very good at giving clear answers to questions. Yeah, but uh, I, OK, I'd like just to come back on one point there, please, uh, Mr. Kirby. One is you've said from the officer's perspective, it would be uh, th there's no reason for deferral at the moment. But would it be possible from the councillor's perspective to defer again for clarity on the A30 link since we are not quite there yet? Um, well, that's a very difficult one for me to answer, to be honest, Chair, because that that, that really is your call. Uh, it, it is the as it stands as, as, as a report and, and the journey we've been on to get to this point, we feel that we've got to a point where there's nothing to say that this cannot be supported. There are a sufficient checks and balances as set out uh, in the report with the recommended planning conditions and with the planning agreements um, as, as would be proposed. So all I can say is appreciating the that we're not quite, you know, even from the project lead, he's, he's hoping he's going to hear some good news soon from London, but there's an awful lot that's going on in the background with regards to the A30. And uh, I know because I'm working with that team and they they are making considerable progress. So they don't see it as a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But I think I appreciate that's not material to this application. You are looking at this on its own individual merits as a planning application. So it, it, it's very difficult for me to say that a deferment would 
it, it possibly solves something with regard to the way the parish feel about it and, and the board member and I understand that position but nevertheless we have now arrived at a position with considerable work from certainly with from my colleague Gavin Smith and myself in support of him that we've we've got a point of of, of a scheme with recommendation that aligns with the NDP. I, I understand that, but I asked if it was possible, and I think you said it that that's uh, for the councillors to decide. I think. Chairman, uh, Ch Chairman if, um, if I may interject, Ben yes. legal. Thank, thanks, Chairman. Just just to say, um, really, I, I concur with everything that Mr. Kirby has said. He said it most eloquently, as usual. He's at, you know, um, an appeal, um, a uh, deferral is always within your gift. But of course, you need to think about um, an appeal for non-determination. Yes. Um, yes. Absolutely within your gift. Just be very careful of that. And as Mr. Kirby has said, there's no reason, as he set out very clearly, why we shouldn't be um, approving the application. Thank um, you. I, I, think, think, I think it's as simple as that. The, the legal advice will be as clear as that, Councillor. Really. And I think that's really helpful. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, I've got one more question, uh, Councillor Kenny. Yes. Just where does the figure 50 come from? It doesn't, isn't actually, is it explicitly stated in the neighbourhood plan? Um, it, it is Councillor Kenny, yes. Yep. Where's yeah. that? Because I mean, um, I'm looking at the policy that just says it's got to enable the A30 link road. There's nothing about it. I was just wondering where the 50 policy, came from. Policy B2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, there's a 50, there's a 50 home um, that when there's reference further into the plan about site D, then there's a conversation about backstops and a conversation about um, what um, what needs to happen. In the ideal scenario obviously being the A30 link, but if there's to be a scenario in a backstop. So, so the 50 is only as part of the backstop uh, discussion, yeah, it's not part exactly. of the Well, it, 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 yes, it, but, but the, it informs the policy, it informs what we should be looking to do. So that's how we've arrived at our position. No, I understand, but it's not, it's not directly with the A30, but it was with the backstop. Okay, no, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, I've got one last question, please, uh, and that is you intimated that there are several weeks of work yet to follow this um, before everything is signed off. Would that be a correct interpretation of something you said in your... It, in, indeed so, Councillor Paul, absolutely. The, 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 the point, I mean, clearly um, Mr Cridland has advised that they will be going uh, all out to get the draft, um, you know, to work it through, which is fine. And, and that process will take as long as it takes. And often that will take several weeks. With the best will in the world, that's just how it goes. Um, so we could be looking at sort of a, if the members were minded to uh, grant in accordance with the recommendation, then you could be looking at, at some point in, in a planning permission, maybe in, in November, possibly. Um, and then obviously there's quite a lot of work to do after that for the applicants. So that then takes us into next year. And of course, you know, that timetable would take as long as it takes. And as I've said already, with regard to the A30 link, we would obviously have some news about that. Um, I'm sure Ms. Uh, Steve Gudge would hear more about that and he's putting on the pressure to get that result uh, so that so we can all work on that one as well. Thank you, that's helpful. Uh, Vice Chairman, I can see no other questions. Would you like to confirm that, please? Yes, what? confirmed, Chairman. Thank you. Then we move into debate. Who wishes to start, please? Vice Chairman, <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I've listened very carefully to the comments from all sides this morning, and it raises a few issues for me. And if I could talk about Land Garth briefly, because I can see parallels arising here. We, uh, we met on several occasions, many occasions, with technical briefings and planning permissions at Langarth. And the, the thing that failed it at the, all the way through was the road. And from then on, we met and we met and we met and decided that infrastructure should be built first and that we would then consider the uh, at land around the, the, the Spine Road. Now, here we are at Roach. We're sort of 
taking a gamble, if you like, to say that, yes, this money will be here to build the, the uh, X30 link. But I can also see that we were promised money for the stadium, but it hasn't materialized yet. Now, I don't want us to end up in a situation at Roach where we end up with a, a second rate road, in my opinion, going through a new estate, through a cul-de-sac, which I believe is Harmony Place off Harmony Road. And I think that's a very poor second and will only increase the difficulties that Roach has at the moment. Now, I would prefer to see this deferred, Chairman, but we're advised that we will non-determine the application. So I'm on a sort of a sharp point, if you like, as to which side to come down on. Uh, I can support the housing uh, application. I, I can see the possibilities for Roach and the, 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 uh, the infrastructure is not there at the moment. And I must support Councillor Wood on that. So that are, those are my views at the moment. Thank you, Vice Chairman. I think you're putting eloquently what we're, we're all uh, pondering. Right, Councillor Tudor, next. Um, yes, I want to agree with um, everything that Councillor Greenslade has just said. And I was, I've been thinking of the parallels to like off too, actually. Um, I mean, we're in a situation here where the parish council have said they're not, you know, um, opposed to the development. And I, I, listening to um, all submissions from the from the office and the developer, I still can't understand why the rush um, and um, if we were to approve this today we could end up in a backstop position which the um, planning officer has confirmed that we could end up with um, even less affordable housing provision and uh, maybe even less 106 contributions towards education and health um, because of the cost of the alternative road that needs to be put in. And I agree with Councillor Greenslade, that alternative road, um, I, don't, I don't feel that's good enough. So um, I think at the very least, I'd be minded to defer this. Um, now, I, I listened to what um, um, the Leaguers officer told us about non-determination, but then at the very least, we would be um, listening to the community here, and I'm sure that the parish council would, would welcome um, a deferment. Thank you, Councillor Tudor. Councillor Kenny, you're next. If you'd like to unmute, please. Can't hear you, Councillor Kenny. No, nope. yes. Hello. No, I no, keep on getting right. I should be all right now. Um, it keeps on logging me off again. Uh, I was going to say I disagree with both of the two previous speakers. Um, yes, it would be lovely to have everything gold plated. I don't think you should allow Lang the history of Langarth to poison this application. We are only talking about an outline permission. Um, I think they've made huge progress into getting what they wanted. And when you read the the, the Roach neighbourhood plan, you think, well, they've got no chance of getting that. But They've, they've almost got it. I don't think we have enough to defer. It's only an outline permission. I certainly won't support deferral. In fact, I would be supporting approving as set out. Thank you. Uh, I, Gavin Smith has indicated he'd like to come in and speak to us. So would you like yes. to do that next, please, Gavin? Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Ball. And Good morning to you all. I just want to stress something that I think Stephen was stressing to you that um, I understand everything when you say about a gamble for waiting for a road and what um, and why shouldn't we defer. But in my mind, that gamble was already taken when the neighbourhood development plan was written. The neighbourhood development plan says either or. It's very clear in there. And this scheme is providing um, with the conditions we're setting out 100% compliance to the neighbourhood development plan. So when that neighbourhood development plan was prepared in full consultation with the community, that was the decision they reached. In my mind, the gamble was made then. There's no requirement of that neighbourhood plan to wait for either of the roads. It's a straight either or scenario. Either one is acceptable in the neighbourhood development plan. 
Um, the reality is, though, of course, members, that I think, well, I know that everyone would prefer to wait for the A30 to St Austell Link Road. If we wait for that road, from our point of view, as the community point of view, we get a better scheme. It's as simple as that, without having to have a road going through the application site, which is suitably constructed for heavy good vehicles, and the constraints that come of that, for example, setbacks from that road due to noise, will have more room and more opportunity to make a better, better environment for people to live with more pleasant living conditions. And from the developer's point of view, they would want that scenario too, because that means they can sell it for a higher price. Everyone wants to wait for that road. Um, approving this scheme today isn't suggesting anything else. Approving this scheme today is just reinforcing what's already set out in the neighbourhood development plan. If we approved it today as set out, it's no different to what's set out in the neighbourhood development plan. The only thing it does do is it gives more certainty for the developers to then start thinking about how they're going to develop the site and what sort of house types they should have, and they can move forward in there. Of course, they're still going to wait to the last second to see if they can get the A30 to St Austell Link Road through before they start. It's it's economically, it's not in their interest to do anything else. So if I could just stress those messages to you, members. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you uh, very much, Gavin. As always, some words of wisdom. Right, Councillor May and then Councillor Brown and then Councillor Tudor, get, get ready, please. So Councillor May, would you like to unmute? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I was going to say if you are taking Councillor Kenny's proposal, I will be seconding. Um, just we've all had these applications that have come in. Um, this is outline. It does take a while for um, reserve matters to come back to us. And then we know even on from then, um, developers, it will still be a while before they actually go and do the first dig um, and start the scheme. So. I think time is out there still, you know, I know um, as Councillor Tudor is saying, it does all seem to be hurriedly put through, but this is the way planning works, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not going to say any more. Um, the neighbourhood plan I see was adopted in 2016. They obviously gave this site a lot of thought then when they put it forward. Um, so yeah, if Councillor Kenny's offer is being taken up by you, Chairman, I will second. Um, Councillor May, Councillor Kenny didn't ma make a proposal. Uh, she, I'm, I'm, happy, just... I'm happy to do so, if that, if that would help. Um, well, I, I now have two speakers before you. Just a minute, Councillor May, would you wish to make a proposal? Sorry, Chairman, I thought she did. Councillor no, Penny no, has now no. stepped in and said she is, so I'm happy to second. Yeah, I can't take Councillor Kenny just stepping in when I've got two speakers before her, Councillor May. She didn't make a proposal at the time. Um, I will withdraw, Chairman, until she does. Thank you. Right. Thank you. That's fine. Uh, Councillor Brown, you're next. Right. Um, Given that, given that there is no proposition, I will come in with another proposition first, which is that the application be be deferred. Um, I've thought I've thought a lot about what's been said during the debate, and I just I think mainly for the benefit of councillors who represent areas quite a long way away from Roach. I think the point that the divisional member was was making early on about the exceptionally bad traffic conditions in the centre of Roach. We've all got um, traffic problems, those of you who represent villages, but um, at the moment Roach is exceptionally bad, partly because of the volume of traffic, but even more because of the volume of um, heavy goods vehicles coming off the A30. That's one of the main reasons why the A30 link road was needed and, and um, one of the reasons why Roach was willing to, if you like, bear the cost of the additional housing over and above an, a very large housing that they've had during the last 20, 30 years. So I, I, think, I think it is certain that this housing development is going to take place whether we whether we approve it today or not what i think what i think the village wants is us to use our best endeavors to ensure that it comes about 
with the support of the link road. And, and I think where I didn't think Mr Smith's advice was correct to us, it was almost implying that the two highways options open are equal. They're not. Putting the putting the road through the estate is very much a subsidiary inferior option, both as regards um, traffic management and also as regards what is acceptable to the local community. I don't think we're going to have to wait that long if what we're told is correct. And equally, I would be very disappointed if the applicants went to appeal for non-determination, given the current furore about um, national planning policies, if an appeal were to be granted in those circumstances. Circumstances. I just can't see the government doing that. So I will move um, deferral of this application to come back as soon as there is greater clarity about the timing and the investment for the A30 link road. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Do I have a seconder for that, please? I second it. Right. Thank you, Councillor Tudor. Councillor Thomas. Can I say something? Or? Uh, just, just a moment. Yes, yeah, please do, Councillor Tudor. Um, I, I'm seconding the, the deferral because much has been made by the officers of, of the neighbourhood plan and how this um, application adheres to the neighbourhood plan. but. I'm sure that if the parish, I mean, they wrote, they got the, their neighbourhood plan together in 2016, which is great. Um, but I'm sure if the parish council or the neighbourhood plan committee was sitting down writing it now, they would write it in such a way as they put a clause in there so that it couldn't be picked apart. Because I'm sure that the neighbourhood plan when they were writing it was to take it, in, it was written to take into a, a account that, that the A30 link road was was up and happening, not not that they were at this point, and I think that's where um, the problem has arisen. So I'm more than happy to second deferring this. Right, thank you. I've still got some people wishing to speak, and Gavin Smith would like to come back in again. Um, before I take further speakers, can I can I bring you back in, please, Gavin? Thank you, Chair. I just want to respond to some of those comments if I can. Um, I understand everything that Councillor Brown is saying, and I think technically he's spot on. But if I could just recommend caution, um, what the Naval Development Plan tells us, which is an adopted document, which has gone through community, through community consultation, of course, it tells us that Roach does have a, pro a bad problem with HGVs driving through it. And I've driven through Roach a lot, and I know that it does have that problem. And I think all of you probably would share those views that have driven through there. But importantly, it tells us also that either option is satisfactory to address that problem. It doesn't say we have to wait for the preferred option. Everyone here knows what the best option is to do. Um, and that's to wait for the same hostel to the um, A30 link road. But the development plan doesn't tell us that. The development plan says to us that either option is acceptable. Um, and just on the point of if the parish council could rewrite the um, neighbourhood development plan again, they might do something different. I've no doubt that they probably would. But I think I'd, I'd invite caution to that approach also, and that probably all of you have looked at policies, including myself and the development plan in the past, and thought, I wish I could rewrite those. They are what they are, and you need to have a good reason to depart from them. I just really urge the members not to defer this for something that's already set out clearly in the neighbourhood development plan. Thanks, Jackie. My God, quicker than the dam. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've still got some speakers. Councillor Kenny, you're next, and then Councillor Thomas. I think Gavin pretty well said what I was going to say. Um, that's nonsense, Councillor Tudor. Um, they, in fact, 2016, they wanted a road and they set the conditions and all credit to them, they're getting their road. So I think the uh, the neighbourhood plan has been extremely successful. I don't think we should willy nilly defer this application. It takes away from um, it takes away from the power of of, of deferring. Um, I think we're relying upon the uh, goodwill of the developer that he doesn't take us to appeal for non-determination because we'd be taken apart at appeal if that happened. Um, so I just think it's a dangerous precedent to set. So I will certainly not be voting for deferral. No, thank you, Councillor Kenny. Uh, Councillor Thomas. Yeah, it's been dealt with, Madam Chairman. 
Right. Um, I think uh, Councillor Tudor seconded what I was going to second, but I, I don't wish to speak any further. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Right. We're moving towards the vote. And then if this fails, then I should be looking for uh, a further proposal. Vice Chairman, you wanted to come in? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Very briefly, all I wish to say is that the, uh, the two either or road schemes, they're, they're not uh, equal with our fish and fowl. The road through the estate to me is, is another disaster for roads and I can't support that. So I would certainly hope that the main A30 link will be funded and will take place if this goes through this morning. Thank you. Right, thank you. Uh, do I have any further speakers before I move to the vote? Would you confirm that I don't, Vice Chairman? Yes, I can confirm, Chairman. Right, thank you. Then I have a proposal from Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Tudor, for a deferral again until there is further clarity on the timing and investment on the link road. Uh, Emma, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. I'll call an alphabetical roll call. So, Councillor Alvey? For. Councillor Batters? Against. Councillor Brown? For. Councillor Bull? Against. Councillor Dyer? Against. Councillor Greenslade? Against. Councillor Jewell? For. Councillor Kenny? Against. Councillor Martin? For. Councillor May? Against. Councillor Simmons? Against. Councillor Thomas? Against. Councillor Tudor? For. Councillor Williams? Against. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to defer has been lost by five votes in favour with nine against. Thank you very much. Then I'm looking for a further proposal and I'm going to come to you first, Councillor Kenny, in case you wished to. Yes, uh, I will. I will propose that we support as set out. Thank you. Do I have a second of that, please? Yes, ma'am. Councillor Dyer. Question, please, Chairman. Yes, of course. Uh, there was some talk about the 50 before things were uh, carried forward that we, we allowed 50 and there was also some comment that that could be reduced. Is that a possibility and could that be included? Uh, come in, Chair? Yes, please. Sorry, apologies to Button. I do apologise. Uh, Councillor Greenstay, we, we're taking that from the NDP. Um, my advice, if I may, to members is please let's let's stick with that. I think that that's a that that was obviously quite a lot of dialogue in, in the NDP about this, and I think that's a very reasonable position, and it's one that the member the applicants accept. So I, I would please suggest that we stay with that. Thank you. That's fine, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor May. I apologise to you, but you you came in next to Councillor Dyer on on mine, and take it you wish to second. Do you wish to add anything more to the debate? Um, no, no, Chairman, all fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman, can you confirm no further speakers? Yes, I can confirm, Chairman. Thank you. Then we will go to the vote and we have a proposal uh, for approval as set out, uh, proposed by Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor Dyer. We will now go to the vote. Ah, oh, wait a minute, Councillor Brown, you have your hand raised. Did you wish? I think. No, no sorry, that that was an error. <laughs> Thank you. Right, we will go to the vote then on approval as set out. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Chairman. I'll call names alphabetically. Councillor Alvey. Against. Councillor Batters. For. Councillor Brown. Against. Councillor Bull. For. Councillor Dyer. For. Councillor Greenslade. Abstain. Councillor Jewell. Against. Councillor Kenny. For. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor May. For. 
Councillor Simmons. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tudor. Against. Councillor Williams. Four. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to approve is being carried by eight votes in favour with five against and one abstention. Thank you very much. Uh, and we've broken all our good records on time this morning. <laughs> uh, I'm now going to call a, a five minute comfort break, please. Well, just over five minutes. If we say um, we get back here at 11.30. Thank you. Thank you.
It's now 11.30. Uh, can the meeting producer confirm? Are we all back? Um, I can do a roll call if you like, Chairman. Oh, oh sorry, Angela, I thought you could see. Um, well, yeah, it will show that people are there. But they're not necessarily sat at their um, computers. Yes, of course. Yeah, it might be a good idea to do a roll call since we all have to be present all through the um, application. OK, well, I can see that you are. Councillor Greenslade. <laughs> yes, present. Councillor Alvey. Here. Councillor Batters. Aye, aye, Captain. Present and correct. Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown. I'll move on for a minute. Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer. Okay, moving on. Councillor Jewell. Yeah. Councillor Penny. Yes, somebody's opening a packet of crisps. Councillor Martin. Yeah, present and correct. Councillor May. Yes, here. Councillor Simmons. Yes, here. Yep, Councillor John Thomas. Yes, present. Councillor Tudor. Present. Councillor Williams. Yeah, I'm present. Okay, I'll go back to Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown, are you with us? You're on mute at the moment. Uh, Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer, you're on mute as well. Uh, Chairman, we're missing Councillor Dyer and Councillor Brown at the moment. Yes, um, given the ruling that all councillors have to be at every point of the application in order to vote, I think we'd better just hold yeah, off. Our oh, councillor Dyer is now with us. I've yeah. been with you all the time. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> councillor Brown, are you there, please? Can you confirm? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I am. Sorry. OK, Chairman, everybody is present. Smashing. Thank you. Well, let's move swiftly on to agenda item 4.2, PA 20-02569, Mr Tom Rouse. Flushing Methodist Church, 8 Cursey Road, Flushing, and its conversion of former Methodist Church to create three residential apartments. The case officer is Nigel Braben. Over to you, please, Nigel. Morning, everybody. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can, or at least I can. I'm just, just going to share the screen. Can everyone see the screen? No, not yet. Well, not in my case yet, Nigel. No, Chairman. OK, let's try again. Can you see the screen now? No, I'm afraid not. Confirmed. Thank you, Vice Chair. What a shame because it worked well at the beginning when we were doing the test, didn't it? Oh, hello, it's Angela Saunders. Are you having Here we go. In? Oh, there we go. Now Sorry about that. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks. OK, bye. I've got a panel on the screen if you can. Right, can you see that properly now, everybody? Crystal here, Chairman. Yeah, fine, thank you. OK, this is a, uh, a detailed application for the conversion of uh, Flushing Methodist Church at Cursley Road. 
There's two key sh key issues relating to this application, and they're clearly indicated on the key issue screen. Uh, one is relates to the parking, and the other relates to the impact on the flushing conservation area. The site is centrally located in the village, as seen on the plan. This plan actually shows the conservation area, which is in um, Can I stop you, Nigel? I don't about that. Thank you. It's just come up. So the. Um, oh, right. I do apologise. The, te the technical backup is, is working slightly behind you. OK. <laughs> I, I, shall, you I shall pause a bit then. So perhaps we could go back to the second. Uh, the, you know, the first plan, please, because it just flashed on and off. Hello. Hello, can you see the location plan? Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So the location pl plan shows the actual site in the centre of the village. I'll go on to the next. Can anyone see this plan which shows the listed buildings? which are identified in purple. Yes. And the conservation area uh, with a dotted purple line around it. So you can see the relationship between the application site and the uh, the listed buildings. Uh, take note, the application site only includes the building itself. This again shows an aerial photograph. Just a note, where my cursor is, or if you can't see the cursor to, to the uh, to the west of the site, there's the rural standard which there is a bus stop. If you can see the existing plans, the existing plan sh shows a, a typical uh, Methodist church uh, with little modern changes to it at all. Uh, the windows are in place as they are, uh, there's no changes to those. So you can see that there's a teaching room at the back, uh, which is like the Sunday school, and at the front you've got the nave and the gallery. In terms of what they're proposing to do, they're intending to keep the, the building as it is really, in terms of the external appearance. Uh, the key issues to really to rate to is the access to the site which goes down the side of the building where they've got some uh, bicycle stands proposed and they've got the amenity and bin storage areas. So the access points for the three units are along the access way which relates to uh, a two bedroom flat a ground floor at the front and a two bedroom flat on the first floor and so the rear they've got one uh, two bedroom unit which covers sorry three two bedroom unit at the back uh, covering the two floors. This shows a cross section uh, of the building existing and proposed. At the front you can see that uh, most of the, um, the fixtures have been removed apart from the gallery at the top. You can see how that cuts across the windows. You look at that as a key issue later on. In terms of what they're proposing to do, they're proposing to put a floor through the main part of the building which actually divides the uh, the front of the building into two flats. This is the pedestrian access to the site uh, so there's just they're keeping that entrance and so nothing's really changed there so visually from the road nothing will change. It's an angled view of the front and, and the main part of the road uh, leading down into the village centre. You can see it's quite a narrow road, a uh, number of listed buildings at the bottom of the street. Uh, the access point where there used to be parking is basically to the west of the, uh, the, the, the Methodist Church. Uh, this is a key picture to look at. As you can see through the existing windows, you can see the, the gallery structure and the stairs up into the gallery. This is the southwest elevation of the building. So at the bit at the rear of the, the building, there used to be some parking historically. Uh, some of those uh, garages at the rear are actually used by residents along along that road, rented out. This is the access point to the um, on the north 
northeast elevation where pedestrians actually gain access into the building on the, on the ground floor. And this is the rear of the building. Again, everything's remaining untouched. So there'll be no changes uh, to this part of the building. This is where the Sunday school element of the building is. So inside of the building, uh, remembering it's a non-designated uh, heritage asset, so a lot of the fixtures actually been um, taken away fr from the inside of the building. So you can see the kind of the open nature of the building as it is with the staircase to the gallery, etc. There's more detail of that. So it's been like that for probably about four years. This is looking back into the um, into the, the back room of the Sunday school and a view down from the gallery. So in terms of the considerations, uh, the two issues that have come up, it, it relates to the, the, the lack of parking on the site. And if you look into the report, the reasons why the, the, the fact there is no parking is not an issue relates to the fact that the existing use of the building, which is key to the consideration of that element, and secondly, is the, the impact on the non-designated heritage asset and also the fact the impact on the Flushing Conservation Area in relation to the fact that although the, the staircase is visible through the windows, there's actually visible uh, staircases and the gallery through that window anyway. In terms of the overall benefits, it outweighs any harm. So conditional approval was recommended. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a member of the public speaking on this application. Mr. Vincent Roberts speaking in objection. Are you with us, Mr. Roberts? Uh, Chairman, it's Angela, meeting producer. I've had to mute all three public speakers because there was background noise. So, Mr. Roberts, if you can hear me, can you press star six on your telephone and that will unmute you? Yeah, Mr. Roberts is now unmuted. Morning, Mr. Roberts. Uh, thank you for coming along this morning. Can you hear me? I can indeed. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you for giving me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, you're, very, you're very welcome, Mr. Roberts. You have three minutes to speak, and you'll be told when thirty seconds remain. Thank you. Okay, start the clock. Um, I, uh, I, along with 22 other of my neighbours, want to object to this application. Um, we, the 22 have objected on the website. We had a petition with another 120 um, through a local, the local village website, and that was uh, because we had problems with an ambulance not being able to get through the village. Anyway, our main objection is, and I know um, the planning officer seems to think it's not an issue, is we feel this is overdevelopment of the site. Uh, now, my understanding of overdevelopment is where <clears throat> the development by its density um, impacts on the local amenity of the neighbourhood. And we think the fact that this this site, because it doesn't provide any car parking, is going to seriously impact on us. We have a major problem at the moment. And that time when the ambulance was blocked from getting up, it was actually a care worker who came to visit one of the elderly in the village. And they just couldn't get, you know, they panicked, they'd only got half an hour to visit the people and they, they parked where they could, which they thought was clear, but it stopped an ambulance. And that was right outside the shop. Um, so anyway, we feel <coughs> that it's overdevelopment. Um, you'll see that most of other the uh, most of other the, of the objectors, the lay objectors, have complained about the parking. I think to, to many extents, although parking may not be an issue, uh, their parking concerns really do relate to overdevelopment. Uh, now, I <coughs> also heard that the existing use, the D1 use class, means that it could be it could be used for a purpose that would create more parking. But uh, to some extent, that's a bit like being told that you might get knocked over by a bus. So there's no point in looking after your diet. Uh, it's it's uh, you know I, this is a change of use, and surely a change of use gives you an opportunity to to correct a situation which is getting bad. And the, and the situation which is getting bad is the parking of this this village. Now, my next point is, it's a detail, but I think it's important, is there's no electric charging point on this site uh, for an electric vehicle. <clears throat> the reason for that, apparently, the applicant says, is because they don't provide, intend to provide parking. Uh, but we would say, if 
an electric parking point is absolutely essential. You won't be able to buy a car in 12 years' time. It doesn't require one. Um, so if you need to create parking spots, then <laughs> to, make, to put in electric charging points, then that has to be. Now, 30 seconds. The, the, the site is difficult to put parking in, but I'm in a, a neighboring landowner and I've offered to make space available for them to provide parking. Uh, I could provide later details of how that would be achieved. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Um, I think I've covered everything I wanted to. Um, I look forward to hearing your decision on this. Thank Bye. you very much, Mr. Roberts. Um, are there any questions for the speaker, please? Councillor Kenny, would you like to unmute? And Councillor Tudor, please. Yes, um, I noticed your offer about parking places. Can we have yes. a, 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 um, a map of the, t the, of the village up so we can see what, what's actually been talked about here? Uh, I, I'm technically no, not. I know you can't, but I was hoping one of the officers, Mr. Braben, right. might be able to put a, a map up. Are you able to do that? I don't know. Can you can you see the screen, or are you just on the phone? I've just come on the phone because I was. Oh well, that's about. sorry. That's not going to help very much. <laughs> so, can you just elaborate what you're talking about? You're you're talking about selling the the parking places, or just? No, no, no. Um, the proposal is the uh, if if you can if you can see the plan, uh, the to the um, to the west of the chapel. That's to the left hand side when you're standing on Terzi Road. There is an, um, a, a, an alleyway which leads up to the parking that the planning officer it leads up to the lockout garage. Yes, the we saw this. Yeah, they're not rented. They're all actually owned by villagers. Um, they're uh, they're freeholds in actual fact. So I don't have any control over them. But I own the pathway. I own the alleyway, and I own the area that stands outside those garages, and I own the quarry, um, which is the big building. Uh, at the top of, of, the, of the site. And what I had proposed is that the, the, the church is in two pieces. There's the original church, which is the, the nave, and then built on the back is an extension, which was built um, a few years later, which is the Sunday school. That's in very poor condition, and it's sort of cracking away from the main building. And my proposal would be that that would be demolished, um, and that they could put, it would mean the cost of um, one flat. Um, I mean, essentially, I think, uh, yeah, I, I went back tracking what I should have said earlier, but we would be able to give them road access at no cost whatsoever. I mean, other, other than legal fees um, in terms of, of organizing it, but I wouldn't want to make any charge for that at all. My, my interest is purely to get, to get these to get a reduced scheme in terms of having two dwellings there rather than three, yeah, to provide have... them with like, external parking spots. Yeah, so that's that was my offer, but no cost. Okay, thank you. No, we have to look at the plans that are submitted to Mortis. So that just explains okay. that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Tudor. Would you like to unmute? Well, hello. Um, I just wondered if you could give us um, a picture of what the parking situation and all that street at the moment. Um, it's, it, it varies obviously from time of day and through the season. I mean, um, throughout, uh, later on today, um, you won't be able to find a parking spot um, within, the, within the central village. Um, there, are, uh, there, are, there is parking which has been created up the hill, which is you know, like about 10 minutes walk away. Um, that's up St. Peter's Hill. Um, but no, the parking, it, it's certain, well, the majority of the time the parking is not good in the village. Um, it's Everybody has to park outside their own houses um, or somebody else, well, in effect, somebody else's house. Um, and uh, and you have to go looking for parking spots when you come back into the village. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's obviously particularly bad in the height of the tourist season or around about Christmas. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I see no others speakers. Can you confirm that? Please, Vice Chairman. Yes, confirm, Chairman. Thank you very much. Then, Mr. Roberts, thank you for attending. Oh, thank you. Can uh, I carry I, on listening? Oh, 
uh, of course, I'm not sure uh, if the meeting producer will direct you to going to computer to listen or will it allow you to stay on the telephone. No, I'll go into computer delivery. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 We now move on to hearing from Councillor Rodney Myers of Milo Parish Council who's speaking in objection. Uh, is Councillor Myers on the telephone? Uh, Chair, and it's the meeting producer. He is, but I've had to mute him. Yeah. So, Councillor Myers, if you can hear me, can you press star six on your telephone and that will unmute you. Yeah, we can hear you now, Councillor Myers. That's, that's uh, great. Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, good morning, Councillor Myers. Can you hear yeah. us? Good morning to you. I'm, I'm sorry about that little delay. And I, I've come off the screen because I couldn't stop the background noise. So I'm talking on the phone. Right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Myers, you now have three minutes to put your case, please. And you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Right. Uh, my name is Rodney Myers. I'm chairman of the Mile of Parish Council. I've lived in the village of Flushing for over 18 years and I'm aware of residents' concerns about the volume of traffic, especially along narrow residential streets such as Kersey Road and Coventry Road, as well as the very limited parking that we have available. Uh, our councillor John Simmons, who is our ward councillor, I'm sure will be citing some particular uh, points out of the Cornwall local plan and strategic policies. I have one in mind, uh, which is policy 13, paragraph 3, where it states, appropriate level of off-street parking and cycle parking should be provided. Now, this may mean just for brand new developments on open site, but it is relevant to this application, which at the moment has not included any parking at all for the development of the flats. And many local residents, therefore, are very much against the potential development as it stands in the application. Another policy number 27 states under transport and accessibility that a development or change of use of a building should not cause adverse impact on the current road network that cannot be managed or mitigated and i see no cover for this in the application i'm sure most flushing residents do not want to see a lovely old building such as this fall into total disrepair which could happen but i feel the potential development of this site could be more aware of the fact that anyone moving into additional flats or apartments developed in Kersey Road will need to be able to probably park a car and this should be defined in the application as I believe with some imagination a solution to this potential big problem could be solved and on hearing what was said previously maybe there's a, an area there that could be looked at. So that's uh, all really I want to say and I do thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much Councillor Myers. Are there any questions for the speaker please? Councillor, Councillor Alby, uh, you're first. Would you like to unmute please? Thank, thank you Chair. Um, and just a very quick one. Um, hopefully Councillor Myers um, may uh, know the answer to this. If not, we'll maybe ask uh, uh, John Simmons or uh, the planning officer. Um, in the, the papers, it says that the, the site or the church used to have car parking, um, which has subsequently been sold off. Would you be aware, was it sold off some time ago when it was still in the ownership of the church or have the current applicants sold it off? I, I do apologise. I don't know the detailed answer to that because I was living on the edge of the village for some years. We moved into the village about five years ago. And I think that all happened some time ago, and I don't know the full history on it. So you're right, possibly Councillor Simmons or the planning officer could advise on that point. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Kenny, would you like to unmute, please? Yes, um, I'm just having a quick look at the Myla Parish Council comment. Uh, and you're talking about having a neighbourhood plan. So really two questions. How far ahead is the neighbourhood plan? And were you thinking of putting a planning condition into your plan? Uh, sorry, parking condition into your plan. If parking and flushing has been like a lot of small Cornish villages and a bit of a nightmare for a long time, 
and it's a major concern of the parish council, um, both in Myla and in Flushing. We are in the process of developing, uh, what we have a, have a steering group developing the NDP, which has gone to consultation, the initial consultation, and that is now completed and we are moving on from that area. But parking is, is part of the considerations within the plan, which you can see on, on the web if you want to. It's about 80 pages long and very detailed. Um, so it, it is a major concern and uh, we haven't got a definitive plan put forward on parking, but it is listed as um, obviously a hugely important element of how we go forward with, with this village and Myla as well. Thank you. Thank you. You content with that, Councillor Kenny? Yes, thank you. I'm busy looking at the plan as I, as I speak. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Vice Chairman, I see no further speakers. Can you confirm, please? Yes, I can, Chairman. Thank you very much. Then, Councillor Myers, Myers, thank you very much for attending. Not and at all. Thank you for your time. I'll mute myself now. Thank you. And we'll uh, move speedily on to Mr. Richard Collett, who is the agent for the application speaking in support. Um, Angela, has Mr. Collett been asked to unmute? Uh, no, Mr. Collett, if you can hear me, could you press star six on your telephone? Yeah, Mr. Collett's now unmuted, Chairman. Thank you. Can you hear me, Mr. Collett? I can, I can Chairman. Thank you, yes. Good. Uh, Mr. Collett, you now have three minutes, and thank you for attending. Three minutes to put your case, and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm Richard Collett of RTP Surveyors. I'm representing the applicant. Um, firstly, there is something in the officer report I'd just like to clarify, um, paragraph or item 12, which has been <clears throat> uh, says that there's been no uh, community engagement prior to this application. Uh, there was, in fact, a lot of public consultation carried out before the church closed. <clears throat> a, a meeting, public meeting was held on the 9th of June 2016 and the chapel closed in August 2016. Uh, the meeting was advertised by posters around the village large poster on the chapel notice board and an item in the village magazine and between 60 and 70 residents attended that meeting uh, of importance is that one of the groups in that meeting was led by the then chair of the parish council so it's clear that the village has had more than enough opportunity to put forward an alternative use for the building but there's not been a single potential user of the building uh, presenting itself uh, turning to the concerns of the divisional member um, first thing parking it should be noted that the County Highways Officer has been consulted twice regarding this application, first upon the submission and then upon receipt of objections. Uh, the Highways Officer visited the site and concluded on both consultations that he has no objection to the application and confirms that the existing use has a higher trip rate than the proposed use. Um, so and in, in addition, I noticed that one objector supports, uh, um, reports that there are 126 homes with no on-site parking in the vicinity. And I feel that rather than supporting their objection, I see this as clear evidence that the normal means of parking in the village is on the street. Uh, and there is no planning policy requirement to provide any parking at all in the sustainable location. Uh, that's confirmed by the planning officer. Uh, regarding appearance, uh, it should be noted that there are only limited amendments to the building. Concerns have been raised about the intermediate floor passing between behind the windows. But this already exists on the street facing elevation and across two of the six side facing elevations um, and such detail is in any event a generally accepted feature of, uh, of church conversions and regularly gets approved on applications to convert listed churches. Um, this is not a listed building um, and the windows in question at the rear of the property are far from any public viewpoint. Um, the, uh, the conservation officer went to great lengths actually to outline his objections, but his original comments were misleading to any casual reader as they referred to the building being removed. Um, and he even stated that it's been removed now, but he did state originally that 90% of conversions of Methodist chapels have been for residential use. So he clearly recognises that that's the most viable reuse of buildings. Um, and you should perhaps note that the permitted development available to the site allows for conversion to a medical health centre, a nursery, an art gallery, education centre, library, public hall, none of which would require any planning permission 
and that an intermediate floor could be installed without any permission. Of the Three minutes, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Very, thank you, Mr. Collett. Um, perhaps you take some questions if there are any. Are there questions for Mr. Collett, please? None at the moment, Chairman. No, I'll give it just a moment longer in case there's a pause, a lag. Yep. Councillor Jewell, would you like to unmute, please? Yes, could I ask the uh, agent at the present time? Um, outside the front of the chapel, would it be possible people resided in that future development to park one of their cars out there? On, on the street, you mean? Yes. Um, who, park, yes. Who, parks yes. At, who parks in front of the chapel at the moment? Obviously, people from somewhere else in the street, but there's nothing to stop. There's no, regu there's no regulation to stop anyone parking there, is there? No, there isn't. Thank you. So, so, so anybody could park there? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And I see no further indication of questions. Agreed. Thank you. Then, Mr. Collett, thank you very much for attending. Thank you, thank you Chairman. <laughs> and we move on to hear from the divisional member, who's our very own Councillor Simmons. Uh, Councillor Simmons, you know the rules better than me. You'll be asked to sum up after five minutes, please. Yes, thank you, Jeremy. Um, can I just put one thing straight? About, um, um, four years ago, when the when the um, when the chapel did close, um, uh, Mr. Collett mentioned the chairman. Well, uh, the that chairman was myself, which I uh, was one of the facilitators about seeing to move the chapel on, and um, because there were so many venues in the village at the time, we just felt that another one could not be uh, we even uh, discussed about two or three of the venues getting together and using the chapel but we just couldn't move it forward um uh, comes uh, uh, about the parking i have never i have never known any parking to go with the chapel um i've lived here over 50 years uh, my wife was born here she's nearly 70 and we, we've never known any any parking which uh, actually belongs to the chapel but um uh, that's that and and the highways officer actually did visit twice which is very very good of him but uh he he visited when it was coming to the end of COVID, and there wasn't many traffic around so that's why it looks good on the on that day but anyway i, I what i'd like to say is i have brought this application uh, to you today because of the number of objections from not only only neighbours but from the whole village. The chapel has been part of the village for over 200 years. Uh, in my view, it's an iconic building in the centre of the village. Over the past years, it, has, it was widely used by local folk. Uh, in fact, my wife attended the Sunday schools uh, there, uh, she was a Sunday school teacher there. My son was married there and my grandchildren were uh, uh, christened there, uh, as were most families in the village. But sadly, in recent years, the congregation has diminished and had to close. Everyone knows that something must be done but three apartments with a total of eight bedrooms in the middle of the village with no provision of parking and the infrequent public service will be a huge burden on the parking problem that currently exists in the village. I know parking is not a planning consideration and realise that the charity has to make the most profit, uh, profit as it can, but couldn't it be charitable and give uh, back to the village and only build two three bedroom apartments so it can be voided uh, to to parking spaces at the rear of the building where the two bedroom apartments is the reason that i am objecting is for uh, policy two section one a and b and section two a and b policy 12 section one and two policy 13 policy 24 the present design uh, form is not appropriate and does not meet the re requirements of the policy or paragraphs of 189, 193, 194 of the NTPS. A similar chapel in Flushing that closed many, many years ago was converted into two apartments, but vertically. So, so 
the long windows was in each apartment, which is a better design than the one proposed there. And finally, uh, policy 27. Uh, Mr. Roberts, uh, that owns uh, most of the, the the land around the chapel. I mean, he he's been very good, and um, and uh, he he has put another proposal forward. I know it's not on on the planning which is before us, but if the a agent would be willing to look at a new proposal for two apartments with some parking, could this uh, could could this application be deferred? Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much, Councillor Simmons. Now we do have some questions for you. Uh, first, I've got Councillor Jewell. Would you like to unmute Councillor Jewell? Chairman, Councillor Jewell is down twice. I, I don't know why. No, I'm, I know. I've I'm here. <laughs> All right. No I'm too keen. Uh, Councillor Simmons, so the proposal by uh, the, the, the objector, he was saying he would be happy if the back of the chapel was demolished and car parking spaces there so do you think is there is there mileage in this trying to defer this application so the agent could negotiate with with the objector in, in this regards or do you well, think it's or do you think um it's probably better to to try and refuse this application what's your views on it well okay. i i Everybody in the, in the village, including myself, we all think something's got to be done because it has been three, maybe four years that it's just been standing idle and it, it's, it's a shame to see it like it. So something has to be done. Um, it was asked earlier, uh, Mr. Roberts, obviously he couldn't share the screen, but if you would like to share the screen, I can show you exactly what, what Mr. Roberts' uh, 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 proposal would be. Is that possible, please, Mr. Braver, to show that screen so we can look at this this idea which is floating around? Here. I shall try and do that now. Thank I'm you. Muted, Jackie. Yeah, I'm, I'm about muted. There are. So if you go, if you could go back one. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, OK. I think it was back to the plans, wasn't it? Yeah, back to where the, where the show the alleyway. Was it the site plan you wanted, John? Is, is, is it the picture you want? Yes, the please. Access? Yeah, it's the next one after this one, I think. Uh, the, uh, the one shelving going up the alleyway. Could be the next one. There, yeah. that's the one. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. If you can see close to you, is that's the original chapel, and if you can see just that bit on the end where it's smoothed over, the 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 uh, the exterior just smoothed over. That is the addition when the school uh, the schoolroom was put on, and what. Mr. Roberts wants to propose. I mean, if you see all this alleyway, all the, all the, all that quarry that he is, he owns all that. Uh, and what his proposal is is to take the old part of the school away, which is the two-bedroom apartment, uh, and use that for parking for the two, three-bedroom apartments, which is would be in front of the uh, in front part of the chapel. So. So, in relation to that proposal, what is what is Mr. Roberts bringing to the table? Because the the car parking will be on the land which is already owned by the applicant. So, where does Mr. Roberts fit into this? He owns he owns the lane way to it. Yeah, we 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 do have to look at the application in yes, front yes, of us. Yes. We're spending a lot of time looking yes. at an alternative proposal. That, that isn't on the table. So um, can I we move you. on, please? Right, I it, tend to, Chairman, I tend to agree with Councillor, but Councillor Batters in the uh, meeting chat. Yes, I agree too. Um, so Councillor Jewell, is your question answered? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Batters, you're next. Thank you, Chair. Um, John, um, looking at this, um, looking at this application, um, one of the things about 
these properties when they fall um, fall out of becoming religious meeting rooms is of course the viability of a developer to take it on and make it profitable because no developer wishes to take on anything that's not profitable four years have passed knowing how these properties deteriorate the cost is probably going to rise annually for any future development now looking at this i don't see too much wrong with it i'll be honest but is there not a concern that if this is not passed this will simply sit around again and we're talking only moments ago about another application that's nothing to do with today but isn't there a fear that in the middle of the main street there's going to become a property that rapidly rapidly deteriorates because i've i saw it happen in bodmin many many years ago what was a a, a, a working place suddenly within two years started falling apart and people couldn't even enter it. Um, so isn't there any concern locally for at least something being done at this moment that will progress the centre of the village? Yes, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I, I did say that uh, I think the whole village knows that, that something has to be done there before it goes too far. It's it, Four years is now still too long, but um, it's just that uh, um, there is a compromise on the table that would suit, suit both developer and the whole people, uh, the whole um, residents in, in, in the village. But that's not the application no. in front of us this no. morning. But um, yeah, I, I know, I, I, I asked for it to be deferred, it's either refusal or, or deferred and uh, let's get something going. I, I mean, I think yeah, I've made my point. I think I've asked the question, but I, I think deferral is again an easy option, which doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to happen for a couple of years. I, I rest my case, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Batters. Uh, Vice Chairman, can you confirm no other questions? Hello, Vice Chairman, can you can can you confirm no other questions? Apologies. Yes, I can confirm. Can can I just ask one then, John, very quickly, very quickly, since you, you are obviously impassioned about <coughs> an alternative suggestion, can you tell me why that hasn't been discussed up until now? Well, um, Mr. Roberts, I think, has been asking for this from the agent since the application came on to, to the table actually before that i think because there, if you know what johnny's whispers are like yeah. in villages but yes yes he's been asking for a, a long while but it seems that that uh, is no notice has thank been you. taken thank you that, that answers it thank you very much uh, um right committee we move on to questions of the planning officer uh, are there any questions for the planning officer please councillor kenny you're first would you like to Yes, I appreciate that most of the objections are based on, or the local are based on plan on parking, but I'm looking at the comments by the um, historic people, who is it? The historic environment planning, and they're not at all happy with what's happening to the inside. So what's proposed is that to remove the, um, the uh, I call it a balcony, I don't know what the te correct technical term, so all the, all the inside of that chapel will be removed. And then you'll be able to see some of the develop the flats across the the front windows. Now I appreciate that you can already see the stair. I suppose it's a staircase and something else. But what would you be able to see through those front windows? What would that? What's effectively is it going to look like? What you will see at the front of the uh, the property will be the actual the floor, the thickness of the floor, which uh, cuts through the windows uh, on the at the front elevation and part of the side elevations. So, bearing in mind that we've got an objection from uh, this historic environment planning, um, you haven't taken that into account, or well, I mean, basically, it says not the present design form is not appropriate. Yeah, the, because it's a, a usually a lot of these uh, uh, Methodist uh, churches are listed. This is not listed; it's non-designated heritage asset. So a lot of the features have been uh, taken out. Uh, and I think what the conservation officer is starting point is looking at the uh, the kind of the, uh, the the best solution in terms of conservation. 
the ideal that you know the the the, the, the number one uh, conversion. Uh, it is the opinion of the local plan authority that the benefits outweigh that particular element of harm to the conversion. Yeah, there's a big problem with these chapels because they do fall into disrepair. But um, could you just show us the pictures of it in its environment? There was one you showed where it was quite green, which surprised me. That was fairly early on, I think. Do you say pictures? Pardon me. You had a photograph, an aerial photograph. From oh, aerial the... photograph, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you. Councillor Alvey, you're next. If you'd like to unmute, please. Thanks, Jim. Very quick one. Um, I can see that it, if we do approve this, the, the chaos that's going to be caused when it's actually being built out. Um, uh, there's no mention of a construction management plan in the conditions. And I was wondering if there, um, perhaps if we do approve this, there should be one. I think that's a very good point. Um, usually we often get the con comments from our highways also mentioning that point, but I would I would be happy to see such a condition placed on a permission if permission is granted as due to the kind of the uh, the tightness of the the actual site itself in terms of the uh, on road parking in order to get materials to the site. So uh, I can perfectly understand that and it's something I would think that I could uh, as a plan authority we could agree with. Good. Thanks. Thanks. I, I, won't, I won't propose uh, approval as yet. We'll see how the. the well, we're on questions okay. to the planning officer at the moment. No, sorry, sorry. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you, you, useful, useful to know if, um, when it comes to it, though. I know. I know. I want good time management, but that's that's pushing it a bit far. <laughs> Nothing further at the moment, Chairman. No further questions. No. Right. Um, um, Right then, we go into debate, uh, please. So who wishes to start that debate? Councillor May. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I'm just surprised um, that we have three pages here from uh, the conservation um, officer and that it's kind of just been kicked into the long grass, although I know Councillor Kenny has once again picked up on it. Um, but I'm proposing refusal on the grounds that the um, conservation or historical officer is mentioning, and you've got them on page 76, 81, 82. Um, so referring to page 76, on the bottom of page 76, um, under uh, point 19, uh, you've got some policies there. It's not appropriate. Um, and, and let's not forget that um, Councillor Simmons is saying, and I know Councillor Batters doesn't want it mentioned, but there could be another offer. And I know that's not what we're dealing with now, but I think we have uh, some very good uh, policies that the conservation area is officer is referring to again on page 79 and um, the bottom there and again on page 81 and 82. Um, so I am I'm proposing refusal. I'm not saying that we need to include parking because I know um, highways have commented. So if Gavin can add anything else, um, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor May. And we'll go to Gavin before we end the debate. But just to clarify, um, Councillor Batters is correct in that we've got to consider the application in front of us, which which you are doing quite properly and quite correctly now. Uh, Chair, if I, Chair, if I may come in there too, I would like to point out that Councillor Batters had no other no other reason for raising that in the chat box other than the fact that the of the um, councillor's concern should have known better than to talk about that yeah. it was only me making a gentle hint in the chat box so i would hate yeah. to think the public think that i've got alternative reasons for doing that off screen councillor batches i understand and I, I i was grateful i was wondering how long to allow it to go to be honest so uh great minds think alike um 
Right, Councillor May has made a proposal, do we offer refusal, uh, which we will debate further if there's wish, but do I have a seconder, please? I'll second it. Council is that Councillor Kenny? Um, it is, I didn't I say that. <laughs> I will oh, say no, 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 where the voice the, came from. That must have been, I'm must sorry, have been I, I do <laughs> not have, have do, who, who said the uh, wishing to I second? Said because I'm not sure. I'm not sure when we when you were asked to second whether we put the cross in the box or we, we say uh, verbally or whatever. But if Councillor Kenny wants to um, yes. go ahead and second it, fine by me. Councillor Kenny, 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 Councillor Kenny has put the cross in the box correctly. So Councillor Kenny, yeah. uh, are you wishing to second? Yes, I am. I would quite happily defer to Councillor Tudor. Uh, I'm not totally happy with completely ignoring the planning um the parking in implications uh, i think possibly if we could include something that would incorporate that i understand the argument from highways that because it's a church you'd have all these but i mean that's not really realistic is it it's not reflecting the existing conditions it's uh, um and i think there is a parking problem in this village street but if you feel we haven't got sufficient there to to argue it, then I won't. But I, w I would quite like to have something on. <sighs> I'm trying to think of the best way of saying it. Perhaps um, Gavin could advise because I, I, I'm not happy with the parking. Well, even I, I, I think it's Matt Stevenson on this one, actually. And mm -hmm. we'll, bring, Matt... we'll bring Nigel and Matt in in just a moment. Um, Chair, can I make a point of order in so much that for some reason my X in the box was ignored? But I don't wish to be awkward. Oh, I am it. sorry, Councillor. That's, that's Patrick, okay. I assumed I'll it stand was down. when you I'll were stand down. I'm sorry, I assumed it was when you were speaking about the um the alternative point that was No, seen. it was there several minutes before that, but oh, never mind. My apologies. Did you wish to add to the debate, Councillor Batters? No, I was going to propose acceptance of it and give my reasons for it, but I I'll keep my powder dry, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh right. Um, is there any any further debate? No, I don't. But he's indicating, Chairman. No. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, then I'm going to go to the officers who wishes to speak on uh, the proposal, please. Okay, thanks, Jackie. I'll come in. It's Matt Stevenson. Thank you. Um, yeah, I understand the difficulties in this application. The two main issues which Nigel will explain and which you've been debating are obviously the obvious the obvious um, key issues, um, both of which have quite a significant impact upon the viable reuse of this important building. Um, so obviously that the parking one, it doesn't seem to be an easy alternative under the current application to create any parking. Um, I think really you'd have to determine this application as it stands rather than defer it, because clearly this alternative would, would require quite a significant change to the scheme and would be a resubmission or a new application totally. So there's, so there's that issue to look at. Um, and obviously we do need to be clear that there is a fallback position of this building having permitted use for other alternatives, however viable they might be in your minds, um, to create greater parking issues at peak periods. And obviously that has been the case up until 2016. Um, the parking that was lost from the, the chapel to the rear still re is retained as parking. It hasn't been developed for other purposes. So there's been no overall net loss in parking overall. So that, that's the parking issue. Um, in terms of the conservation officer's comments and the impacts, um, obviously it's that bullet point four they're referring to him primarily, and that's the putting in the second floor. Um, and obviously you lose that void within the building by doing that. Again, I think members are, are recognising that probably the only viable reuse of this building would be residential. And again, not putting a second floor in there and having such a large void for those rooms. I think firstly, there'll be certain issues for any residents staying in, um, living in that property. It's such a huge room and, and roof space and the heating and everything else of that. But secondly, obviously there's a, there's, there's a significant viability issue of possibly only creating a single unit within there if you subdivide it in such a way. So I think both of those potential reasons for refusal cause problems down the line um, for anyone coming back in. Um, the viable alternative. 
However, Matt, I do have a proposal for refusal on, on the grounds outlined by Councillor May, in particular page 19 in the Conservation Officer's Report. Um, we, we will see if that stands or falls when we may be looking for a different proposal. But can I can, can you please comment on the wording uh, in giving some help to Councillor May on that, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, in terms of the the conservation side of things, the possible wording would be um, the conversion by reason of installing a first floor structure. Uh, and I'd probably add to that that, the, that is visible from the, the front elevation within this non-designated heritage asset, which would be visible through the existing windows facing the public highway, would have a negative impact on the conservation area in terms of its character and appearance. And therefore it's uh, contrary to policies 24 of the local plan as well as the, the relevant paragraphs in the MPPF. And the parking implication, it was suggested by another account committee member that that um, might be added. We don't know if council... Yeah, in terms of the, the wording around that, that would be policy 13.3. I, I don't, I wouldn't suggest adding any other policies because yeah. I think policy 13.3 is the most appropriate one. Um, yeah. and the one we'd stand most chance of um, presenting a case should this go to an appeal and that's around the appropriate level of parking in terms of the the area's accessibility to services and public transport so really you'd have to say that it's the accessibility of this area um, isn't that easy um, public transport isn't sufficient for this to provide no parking right thank you uh, councillor may can i go back to you Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I understand what Matt is saying. Um, as long as he is sure about the policy 13, paragraph 3, um, I'm happy for that. Um, I'm not saying that the principle of a dwelling shouldn't happen. All I'm saying is we should really pick up on what the conservation officer is saying. Too many times we're just kicking his comments into the long grass, I feel. Um, you know, Flushing is a much loved village by surrounding areas, Penryn and Falmouth, and I'm sure there could be a much more sympathetic uh, design um, for this building, albeit that it might not be three flats, but could be two, um, taking on board that there is scope to do other things with the building at the rear. Um, so not against the principle, as I am sure Councillor Kenny isn't as well. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you yes. very much. And Councillor Kenny, can I come to you now? Yes, I, uh, I agree. I think it's, uh, um, it is obviously ripe for conversion and renewal. Um, I just think it needs a, a, a review of, of what they're doing. So I would, I'll continue to second the motion to refuse. And you're content with the words given to you by Matt Stevenson. Yes, I think he's done a great edition of policy 13.3. Which includes the concept of parking without making it. Yes, I think that's fine. Right. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any other speakers listed. Would you confirm that, Vice Chairman? Yes, Chairman, I can confirm. Thank you. Then we'll go to the vote. Uh, on the proposal for refusal on the grounds outlined and agreed between Councillor May, Mr Stevenson and seconded by Councillor Kenny. So the proposal is for refusal. Emma, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. I will read the names alphabetically. Councillor Alvey. For. Councillor Batters. Against. Councillor Brown. Um, against. Councillor Bull. Against. Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer. I'll come back to Councillor. Oh. oh, four. Thank you, Councillor Dyer. Councillor Greenslade. Against. Councillor Jewell. Four. Councillor Kenny. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tudor. Four. Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams. Four. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to refuse has been carried by nine votes in favour with four against and no abstentions. Thank you very much. And that moves us straight on to agenda item five. Any other business considered to be of urgency and there is none. Um, so I want to thank you all, thank the officers and thank the members of the public and the vice chairman for a good meeting and see you next time. Thanks. Bye now. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. 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 Thank you, Chairman.